It's like a war zone. A war zone that left Kemo Soleimani's northeast Portland apartment complex riddled with bullet holes. It happened late Friday night near 87th and Gleason. Police say someone fired an astonishing 150 plus rounds. One bullet came right into my room, um, missed me barely, you know, on top of the, my head and then landed on the wall. The bullets hit several cars and apartments. There was one reported injury. A woman shot in the arm. We're told she survived. And, uh, I came over and I put a tourniquet on her and, and got her to stop bleeding and kind of tried to help her. You could really smell the gunpowder in the air too. It was really, really intense. Days later, even the police are stunned. It just shocked the conscience. I've been doing this work for a long time and I specialize in um, gun violence years ago and I have never encountered any crime scene with that amount of gunfire. The shooting itself and the number of rounds fired aren't the only reason officers are rattled. For months now, they've been reporting spikes in shootings, stabbings and other violent crimes, all of it culminating in a jarring headline. 15 homicides in July alone, marking Portland's deadliest month in 30 years. One of the victims, 18-year-old Shay India Harris. She was phenomenal. <laughs> I loved her so much. Last week, detectives named Harris's boyfriend as a suspect, 18-year-old Casey on Colbert. Police are still looking for him. Harris's family thought he was the obvious choice, and they're mad it took weeks for the Bureau to get the word out. That is outrageous. That is beyond where are our officials at? Why is it so quiet? Um, our job, number one for us, is public safety and uh, preservation of life. Last week so at we a news conference, Portland, Portland Police Chief Chuck Lavelle didn't mince words. Recent protests targeting racism and police violence have been taxing on the Bureau. Officers are exhausted and stretched thin. Plus, he said calls for reform are coming to fruition. Earlier this year, the city disbanded PPB's gun violence reduction team after a 2018 audit found officers in it were disproportionately targeting black Portlanders during traffic stops. Now, the chief said Portlanders are seeing one impact of that move. What was really lost was the follow-up um, piece um, that assisted in the investigation. Everything from picking up video to going out contacting people and things of that nature. As a result, the Bureau is moving patrol officers to the detective division to try and make progress on a growing mountain of investigations, each one leaving a trail of victims who don't understand what's causing the violence. Because I'm not playing around. I'm not playing and I'm not scared. I'm pissed off. This needs to stop. Okay, Maggie Vespa joining us now. Maggie, let's start with the mayor's statement on this, which he just sent you a short time ago. Yeah, exactly. And remember, Mayor Ted Wheeler is the police commissioner here in Portland, which is a big reason that we reached out to him. And his office just sent us this statement, um, basically reiterating the changes that were made at PPB. We're going to put the statement online. It went on to point out that other cities are experiencing spikes in gun violence as well. But it also said the mayor was, quote, very concerned about this trend here in Portland. And then they also said that members of the Office of Violence Prevention are meeting with victims and meeting with um, people who live in the neighborhoods impacted by these shootings to try and figure out basically how the city can put a stop to this. So they just want to make sure people were aware of that info. Okay, but let's broaden this out just a little bit. You talk about the national media coverage of these protests, which both you and I covered. You were there all last week. When I see some of the national reports, they appear to be drawing a link between the protests and this violence you're describing now. Is there any merit to that? So the short answer is no. Police have not found any connection between these shootings and the protests. I mean, remember, those of us who know Portland, we know that, for instance, this shooting that happened in the Montevilla neighborhood, that's miles away from where the protests have been happening downtown. It's across the Willamette River. Uh, and, you know, but this is nothing new. I mean, the president over the last couple of weeks wrongly tweeted that the city of Portland was under siege and it was in danger of burning to the ground. And sort of that national rhetoric in mind, our producer, Brian, has routinely been tweeting and posting on social media this video uh, just to kind of show people how small the area is where these protests are taking place. It's a few blocks downtown. And again, just this most recent example, Montevilla, that neighborhood is miles east of there. And just to reiterate, police 
And also, for that matter, the neighbors who live in the Montevilla area where this shooting happened even told us on camera that they see no connection between the protests um, and this recent gun violence. So we just want to make that as clear as possible based on what we know at this point. Got it. Maggie Vespa, thank you.